Hello, and welcome to the Vlogging Pod. Tonight, we are joined by Ariel Dawn. <laughs> welcome to the room, Ariel. How are you this evening? I'm great. How are you? I am not doing too bad. It would be better if it were warmer, but, you know, <laughs> after I the last you. warm up and all the tornado warnings, we'll all wait. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I want to start right off because, and if most of you can read from the bio on the podcast, um, Ariel, you are a U.S. Today best-selling author. Can you tell me how that actually came about? So a couple of years ago, I've been writing for about four years. Um, so a couple of years ago, I was involved in a anthology called Midnight Magic. Um, and it was a wonderful anthology. And at the time, um, the USA Today bestseller list was still very much open to pretty much anyone. Um, I know it's changed a little bit in the last year. Um, but at the time, it was kind of like this big thing for anthologies to make these list runs. And uh, I just happened to be in, in Midnight Magic. We had a phenomenal uh, amount of authors that all worked our butts off and we hit the list. And, and because of that, um, I get to say that I am a USA Today bestselling author. Uh, and fun fact, I found that out while I was cleaning bathrooms <laughs> at my day job. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, it kind of makes you feel like, yeah, cleaning toilets is worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, all right. <laughs> I'm counting down the days that I don't have to clean toilets anymore. Yes, and I don't have to do that anymore, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> awesome. That's fantastic. Now, how long ago was that? I want to say about two years ago. Two so we're years. in 2024 now, and I can't believe we're in 2024. I feel like I blinked in like four years just went. Oh, Ooh. I know. I know. It's surprising me how fast thing has went as well. Cause I'm just like, I look at the time and I'm thinking, wow, where did it go? Especially I'm probably like a lot older than you are. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> when did this <laughs> crap happen? <laughs> so, um, now I don't know if you've noticed, but if you can see the title of the room is wrong turn romance. I just love your Instagram. The, Thank you. the title. That's Thank fantastic. You. Where did that come from? So uh, way before I ever started writing, um, I've always been a reader. And I started my bookstagram, Wrong Turn Romance, uh, well before I started writing books because I kind of fell into this weird little niche where I was trying to, uh, I was trying to make money by doing something that wasn't writing because I didn't know that I was supposed to write books yet. So wow. I actually worked as a book reviewer for a little while uh, for online book club and uh, I arc read and, and did things like that. And so at the time I wasn't um, necessarily like fully on into like indie romance yet. I wasn't really reading a ton of romance yet. And I was like this, this opposing audience, right? I was the person who was like, oh my God. Do they really talk like this? Oh my God. Like, and, and putting all these crazy covers with these crazy tropes on my bookstagram. Um, because I recognized that there was an audience for it, even though at the time I didn't consider myself that audience, which is why you should never say never. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you see yourself as being different now on the other side of it as far as reviewing now you're writing it how do you feel that's different for you now in so i feel like being as i have that perspective of being a reviewer and and being the fresh face to romance because it wasn't necessarily my genre that i read even though i always loved uh you know books that had romance in them I feel like that gives me an interesting perspective, uh, both as a writer and as a reader. So oftentimes when I am writing and now that I understand more about tropes and more about different plot structures and, and the different kinks and all the, all the little details that go into writing a book, I always keep it in the back of my mind that yes, I'm writing books for an audience that wants to devour them, but how do I hit the person who was me? who might just pick that book up and be like, 
I really enjoy this. And, and it leads them to, you know, discover more indie authors or a genre or something that they haven't experienced yet. So I, I do think in the back of my mind, I always kind of keep that there. And I do still try to write to the reader who is not necessarily in my, in my audience. I try to write to past me. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think that because you were a reviewer, do you think at that time you were harsher on writers now that you are a writer or do you think it's reverse? I think I definitely was harsher back then because I didn't have the understanding that I do now, even as a reader. Um, because at the time mm. when I w when I was reviewing for um, the different outlets and I, I started Wrong Turn Romance, I was, I was more of a young adult reader. Um, I read a lot of young adult, uh, specifically, like, I was very into, like, Twilight and, like, Matched uh, by Ali Condi and, um, Neil Shusterman, like, so I was reading a lot of more, like, fantasy, paranormal, young adult, and I'd read some more adult romances, but nothing that was, it was more like the traditional, uh, published, like, romances, like Fifty Shades of Grey or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do think I was a little bit harsher then because I didn't necessarily understand the scope of this genre and all the tropes that it entails and the formulas of romance writing. Um, and, but because of that, I ended up discovering more indie authors that way. And I became more familiarized with it, um, as a reader. And then eventually life just took a curveball and I started <laughs> writing a short story to prove to myself that I could do it. And here I am 50 some titles later. So <laughs> writing romance. If you, if you could tell your something in advance, um, as far as being a writer to a viewer, is there anything now that you would tell your past self? You will get there. Do? Be Are patient. You, <laughs> <laughs> you will get there. Be patient. <laughs> awesome. I just find that interesting because it's it's very interesting to be on both sides of it. You know what I mean? That you have, you were once this and now you're this. And so just to kind of know what it is, you know what I mean? From one point to the mm -hmm. next to see the perspective on how that changes. Now let's talk about Hell Everlasting. Now this is book sure. two, am I correct? In the Lost yes. Soul series? Yes. Okay, talk to me about how this book. Now, I think this came out in January. Am I wrong it did. or right? You okay. are correct. It came out in January. Awesome. Um, January 4th, I believe, is when it came out. It is the second book in my Lost Soul series, um, which is kind of funny because I have been um, working on the Lost Soul series for a little bit of a little bit of time. Um, and previously, uh, readers have likened it to Has Been Hotel and Hell of a Boss, and I have had never seen either of those. Um, <laughs> so I thought that was a very interesting comparison. And recently, I have seen um, Has Been Hotel, and I am absolutely obsessed. So, and the comparison is good. Um, <laughs> but it that was is, awesome. But it is a series that is about an angel and a demon who end up having to work together to help a lost soul find her body and live. And of course, heaven and hell want her soul for themselves. So there is a little bit of um, enemies to lovers in there. There's a little bit of found family. Um, and it's, it's a very interesting series for me uh, in terms of like my other series. The romance is probably not as prominent um, at least in the first book, but uh, with Hell Everlasting, things do things do start to heat up. Um, and there is one more book that is coming uh, in the series, and I am currently working on it now, so I'm working on the last book. Nice. Now, you know, that kind of, it sets a stage for me a little bit because we share a similar sort of storyline. <laughs> <laughs> Not totally. I do have angels in hell in one book, um, a demon and an angel, and uh, but mine is called uh, Catastrophe, so it's a little bit different. But it, that was like, oh my gosh! 
And so Dora that's and Valerie really- are very interesting characters because it, I, I really like to try to play with that idea of like what is good, what is evil type thing. So yes. you have Endor who who exudes like these, you know, he, he's very like noble for being a demon. But he's also kind of brash. And you have Valerie who is, you know, she died a virgin, like, you know, very pious, religious <laughs> person and she her her journey involves like like her in a sense falling and like you know experiencing the world that she didn't get to experience while she was alive um so it's it's a very interesting very interesting series for me oh it's it sounds like it i really well as you already know i you know i enjoy that perspective since i've already got a <laughs> i've got something nothing totally different storyline but you know what yeah. i mean but i do like that premise um so now speaking of your books i found this very interesting i was looking through the feeds Mm -hmm. and february 8th we got whisper in the woods back on amazon tell me about how that feels to have it back up for your oh my god i was having a conniption because this is this uh monsters of ashwood is my best-selling series it is uh the darkest of my series um it does come with a list of trigger warnings uh, but it is a duet, and it is a tale of surviving abuse and trauma and all those things. Um, so when when it came down and was blocked after I had um, updated some formatting, uh, I, I with a myriad of other authors who who went through this, I was like devastated. <laughs> and uh, it was the paperback that was down. Thankfully, uh, the ebook was was okay, but I was you know, emailing Amazon, worried that this book was not going to be available. And to hear that I had uh, readers and friends and family and supporters that like called in on my behalf and said like, are you crazy? This book does not need banned. Um, Was extremely humbling. And I'm extremely thankful. And because of all that fuss, it got reinstated. And yeah, that was like, I was on cloud nine. I was like, Oh, my God. (laughs) <laughs> I, I would have had a panic about that heck I, uh, for some reason i was on facebook and i had gotten kicked off for an hour and i was like what what did i do why what, what? <laughs> so yeah i if it had moved my book i don't know what i would have done i would have had a meltdown as well i don't want to say awesome. that i was that that i was expecting that for uh whispers in the woods but um my monsters of ashwood series has it it's kicked up some dirt <laughs> since it's been around oh. Um, it's now, a great, it's a great series though. It really is. Now, speaking of monsters, because the monster of the Ashwood series, um, mm-hmm. now I, I've read, like I said, I've went through a couple of interviews and all that, and you started out doing uh paranormal romance, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And you, let me, you said, um, where am I? Yeah. Okay. So you went from Paranormal Rats and you started with vampires, then shifters, Mm -hmm. and then you went into monsters. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. So tell me the draw because monsters seem like a total flip. You don't see a lot of that. You see the werewolves and vampire series. So what appealed to you for the whole monster kind of side of it? For better or for worse, I have ADHD and an overactive imagination. <laughs> and uh, probably about, I want to say, a couple books in, because I started writing predominantly paranormal romance, you know, vampires and, and shifters and that sort of thing. Um, I started really kind of like reading ro- monster romance. Um, I started seeing it a lot in the groups, people recommending certain monster romances. Um, and I just, I liked the idea of it. I'd never read a monster romance. So I read a couple and I was hooked as well as already being hooked into reverse harem. And I had this idea because again, I'm in all these groups and I'm in all these spaces, you know, both as a reader and an author. And I kept thinking, well, I love like, like a monster romance. Why choose right around Halloween but let's feature some monsters that like nobody else has written because I like to give myself a challenge. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So I, I knew that gargoyles are very popular. um, Mm -hmm. And I think shadows are starting to be a little bit more popular. Uh, But as far as I knew, nobody had written a hide behind, which is uh, a type of cryptid that is really super creepy. Um, (laughs) So 
So <laughs> I decided that was it. I was going to do uh, a gargoyle, a shadow, and a hide behind. And uh, I just poured all my dark little heart into this book. Um, it is definitely an homage to the darker side of, of my writing and media and things that I like. Um, it does have very much an Anne Rice kind of feel to it. Um, mm -hmm. But also you still get that high spice, that high level perfection that people love in monster romances with a ton of kinks and trigger warnings. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds fantastic. Like I said, I was appealed to it. And that's why I added it into the interview as far as what we were coming for the whispers of the woods. Mm. So <laughs> you might have a new fan. <laughs> I'm actually in the process. I'm actually in the process. I haven't launched it yet. Uh, we are in pre-launch, so people can go check it out. But there will be a Monsters of Ashwood Kickstarter coming very soon nice. with some gorgeous artwork and beautiful special editions. So. Well, fantastic. I'm really excited about that. Now, when you were talking just a second ago, you brought up gargoyles. Now, I'm going to skip ahead because I did have it in my questions because I found that in an interview that you did when you were talking about Disney's gargoyle. Now, mm -hmm. I have, before I ask this, I have, the reason I bring it up yes. is because um, an interview prior to you, mm -hmm. um, I had brought up watching gargoyles, you know, when I was younger. And, of course, the person I was talking to was considerably younger than myself and had never heard of the Gargoyles. And I was like, what? What? You're like, <laughs> then, how dare you? I know. And, she, and then I read it in your oh. interview when you were talking about the 90s. And I was like, ah! now, Doug, mind you, I, I am older than you. I was, you know, I was almost graduating soon. But I still love the Gargoyles. I found it. I found it so deep and just. I don't know. Oh my god! Yeah. And, and it's not me. It. I've rewatched it as an adult on Disney Plus, and it's still like it still hits so good. It, it is even as even as an older teen as I was at the time. I still was like, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. like I was, I was like, this is so flipping awesome. And even I see, um, even when I was older and had a job i still freaking watched it you know what i mean yeah, as i was going yeah. into my 20s and i still loved it and so when i actually heard someone who didn't know it i was like no no say it's not so <laughs> <laughs> so i when i saw that i was like oh my god this is a kindred spirit right here she's into the gargles awesome. i just love this so tell me did, did what watching that and into your books now has that has that inspired you in any way, shape, or form? And what series and where can I get it? <laughs> um, I definitely think that watching like a lot of media growing up, whether it be Gargoyles or Buffy or Supernatural, um, I am very much uh, a fangirl at heart. So a lot of my books, including Monsters of Ashwood, which, you know, drew from things like The Addams Family and Dracula and Anne Rice or Ava Crowley Vampire Slayer series, which draws from like Supernatural and Buffy, like all of that stuff influences my writing um, because I feel like growing up and watching those characters, those characters were very much deep characters at least to me mm -hmm. they you know you could watch a you could watch two guys a girl in a pizza place and i know that's a really far throwback uh, <laughs> but, uh you could watch something like that and and there's surface value yes and some of the characters have more more depth but i feel like watching some of those older cartoons or those older shows in a time when you know we didn't necessarily have like streaming they had to kind of like work a little bit harder i, I want to say to like mm. keep things going on the air so it was like uh even the with supernatural the monster of the week for the first season and then after that you know once we bring in like angels and demons and everything kind of goes where it goes so yeah i do feel like a lot of that stuff definitely influences my writing so i right. think that answered the question <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's great i for you i get you but you know you brought up buffy i just have to ask what about um 
uh, Bewitched. No, not Bewitched. I'm sorry, wrong one. Uh, Charmed. That's it. Charmed. Charmed. Yeah, I definitely was a fan of Charmed uh, at the time mm. that it was on. And I, I do say sometimes, like, with certain series of mine, um, especially, like, the Forevermore series, I would say definitely has, like, some Charmed vibes in there. And that oh, is the yeah. parent series it. to Ava Crowley and uh, the Hunter Games. They're like a, uh, they're like a three act <laughs> series. So, <laughs> I I love Charm. For me, that was the first women empowering kind of series. Do you know Charm. what I mean? I mean, mm-hmm. it just kick butt empowering women. I mean, I love that, and I I think that speaks to even my own characters as I write. I just love that empowering of women. Same. So. Well, awesome. I see. I knew we had kindred spirits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I've read a quote. Uh, do you mind if I quote you? Uh, go for it. All right. So I hear that you said pure and utter chaos is how <laughs> you would you would call your process, your writing yeah. process. Yeah. Can you run me through that and tell me why? Um. Mostly because I like to say that I try to have a plan, but I have ADHD and a caffeine addiction and <laughs> <laughs> an overactive imagination. So while I try to have a plan, a lot of times I, I think tend, a, tend to go off the rails a little bit. Let me just say one thing. I have to think, I think a lot of authors are ADHD, to be honest with you. Oh, you know what I mean? Absolutely. I know so many that are, but I do, I, I do like to say is pure and utter chaos just because of you know just chasing those ideas and those plot bunnies and i i do try to at least map stuff out and organize stuff but there will be so many times where i will see something something somebody will say i'm looking for this book and nobody's written it and i go please don't tempt me please don't tempt me please Mm, don't (laughs) yeah I, I, because i understand that i am very i'll get an idea and the next thing i know i've I've dumped a series and I've moved on to something else. Um, my husband that keeps telling me, you need to finish a series. You need to finish mm-hmm. a series, which uh, breaks me into the fact that I just now finished a book. I started in 2015. Wow. But <laughs> yeah. snaps. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. But 2015 and I've picked it up and put it down and picked it up and put it down. But the, I understand that. And that's why I said, I think a lot of us are that way. Yeah. And I think it takes outside influences like Laura. I love her. She keeps me on track. Yes. She's like, yo, yes. where's my this? Where's that? And, 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 and of course my husband as well points out, like, you need to go back to this. Why isn't this one finished? Why haven't we, you know what I mean? <laughs> because I'm very, I get that way. I'll get excited. Just like what you were saying. Someone will say something. I'm like, yeah, why isn't that written? And the next thing I know I'm writing storylines and, and chapters into something, which, you know, mm-hmm. for me, I have seven books unfinished. That's where that's gotten me. So I, yeah, when I you always, say that to me, yeah. I when you say that to me, I get that. Of stuff that's, I call it in the hopper. <laughs> it's in the hopper. It's, it's waiting. Yeah. You know? uh, but I yeah. work on several books at once. So I do think uh, that's where the ADHD is a blessing and a curse. So. Yeah, I get that too. I, when I was in my real push, which was back in 2010, that ages me right there <laughs> when I was in my real push and I was in my forties then, no, no thirties. I take that back. Let's not, well, I'm 50 now. So let's not do the math though. <laughs> anyways, um, anyways, I was, I did 12 books. I published 12 books mm-hmm. and I, so I get it, but so I get the the thrive of going from one thing to the next, but the excitement of it is really hard to not dive right into, you know, the, the new. It and is. I find that really hard, especially I'm editing right now. That book I tell you about from 2015, I'm editing and I'm like, and I'm rereading stuff, you know, and of course updating my writing as I'm going. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, holy crap i can't wait to find out what happens you know what I oh mean? But, i love that i always say writing yeah. is like binging a netflix show because you have no yes idea what's next. <laughs> yes i just wish that the other part of my brain was quicker and that the part that's enjoying it would be like yeah give me another book and i'm like crap there's only one <laughs> so, Same. yeah well, it's all that work i've definitely felt that way about several of my books um most can you still hear me okay yes i can hear you 
Okay, it just like my phone cut out there for a minute. Um, I've definitely felt that way about several of my books where like as I'm writing them, the excitement of writing them, of not knowing what's going to happen <laughs> next, you know, where yes. I like, finish up that chapter and I'm like, oh my God, now what? <laughs> now, so that, that, that kind of runs off into another question. Are you a pure out plotter or because you read because you feel like you're reading it while you're writing that's how i feel mm -hmm. i don't like to finish mine i don't like to know the ending because to me it feels as if i'm reading it while i'm writing it and most that it of comes the time as it come. most of the time i know the ending um mm. and as i write uh discovering like kind of like how everything gets there um mm -hmm. most of it even with like series like ava like i do know the ending um and and they're still kind of the books are still coming out and they're still going um and the journey is still happening but i've always known since the first book like where it ended and i kind of feel like i'm i'm like that with most of my books um i usually know the beginning and i usually know the end and i have to kind of the excitement is figuring out the journey between and i am definitely like a plot stir i started out as a full-on pantser and then i needed to be a little bit more organized so i <laughs> i'm trying that um and now I, I do like this uh form of like semi outlining where i don't outline completely like the entire book sometimes i do it depends but most of the time i will semi outline five chapters at a time so i'll go into my into my google docs which is where i write and i'll set up my first five chapters and i'll make little notes that have prompts that tell me this is what's going to happen here this is what you need to write and then that gives me some space to be able to kind of go off the rails a little bit and adjust and keep things fresh and moving as I'm writing it. So I don't necessarily know what happens from chapter to chapter. I can still kind of follow those plot threads, but still give me some structure to keep things linear. Mm -hmm. Now see, I, I will do either a tablet beside me, a, a laptop, and then the computer that I'm writing on. I know it's a little much, it's a little excessive. <laughs> but what I do is, is I'll like, on one device, because I do everything on Microsoft Word. In fact, when you said Google Docs, that intrigues me too, <laughs> because mm -hmm. I've never thought to use. I have used Google Docs before, but not in the same way as writing. I've always used Microsoft Oh my Microsoft God, I Word. live in Google Docs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I use Microsoft Word, but what I do is, is I like to have it where all of my devices can get the same documents. Mm -hmm. And which I know you can do on Google Docs as well. But so I'll yeah. have one tablet. I'll have a tablet with one like the previous chapter on it and then mm -hmm. the the laptop will have my um the character bios each one so i know what i've created for each character and that sometimes grows with each installment each book you know or each chapter yeah. and then on well, the main computer in the center i have the book <laughs> that i'll add to take away or do whatever so i get that but that is interesting how you do that now do you do a storyboard by any chance i don't um, it, it's sometimes I think I should be more organized and I should do things like storyboards and story Bibles, but everything is up in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do it occasionally. Like, um, currently I have, like, I have a she shed studios and I'm mm -hmm. in the sound booth currently, but I also have a home office in the house. And in there, I actually have a storyboard but only on the the work i was just referring to the one i started in 2015 only because it's so far you know what i mean past mm -hmm. that i want to make sure i'm closer to it and i don't know about you but the closer i am to work i have to have a hands-on to it do you find that with yourself like to memorize it either you have to write it down type it in to have that grip because you said you're very organized in your brain how do you get that are you just that sync that you it goes and it sticks or do you have to have a physical touch to it both because a lot of times it will just repeat in my brain until i go and get it down <laughs> um, oh my we so, are so kinsmen on this because i yeah. do that too in the shower is the worst time that i'll get thought ideas i'm like, oh definitely <laughs> that, it, it's always right before i go to bed mm. like, or i then you have, I have to get to up to sleep like i'll start running what the next chapter is going to be or what's going to happen and yeah yes. um, that's the worst for me but a lot of times i will either just keep it around in the back of my brain or in in times where i don't have a piece of paper or something i just 
I'll queue up my notepad on my phone, or I oftentimes have a, um, I call it an info doc, um, where I just kind of put notes or descriptions or things like that, things that I might just need to reference at some point. Um, And I've been known to dictate too. So even if I get like pieces of dialogue or something and I'm nowhere near my computer, like I'll dictate it and then I'll go jump into Google Docs later and pick it up and, and clean it up and do what I need to do. That's really cool. Because I, I do the same thing as far as getting an idea. And then I have to get up. I have to write it down on a posting note or something but, in yeah. order to retain it. I'm really bad about that. Um, so for my last question of the evening for you, what's next? What do, what's what's coming? What do we got coming? Oh, uh, so much. Um, <laughs> I'm, currently, I'm currently working on the last Lost Souls book. Um I have the Monsters of Ashwood Kickstarter coming out soon, and I am working on a exclusive prequel novella that will only be available in that Kickstarter. Um, that will that is part of that uh, that world, that Monsters of Ashwood world. Um, I have a bunch of signings coming up. Um, starting with July, uh, I will be in Trumbull, Connecticut, for Romanticon, um, and I will also be in. Salem this year for getting witchy with it, uh, as well as Florida for uh, Flirty in Tampa and somewhere in my hometown of Pittsburgh. Um, we are putting together a convention uh, for the Steel City, so I will be doing a local one as well. Um, but nice. other than that, it's just a lot of projects. Um, I'm all I've always got stuff going, so I have a bunch of co-writes coming this year. Um, there is more in the Scared Shiftless series with myself and Margaret Bond Collins. Um, our third book, Hot Shift, just dropped today, actually. Um, nice. And, and uh, I do also have some co-writes scheduled with AJ Mulliken. Um, Stella Nova and I are working on a uh, project together. And Quality Fox and I are also working on another project together. So there will be a lot. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm awesome. I, that is very awesome. And you know, at any time, you're more than welcome to come back. I would love to dive deeper into some of those. Absolutely. Awesome. Wonderful. So we've reached that time, guys, you know, that time that you love so much. And I have to tell you guys, um, Amazon tells me you like it because the clicks are getting bigger. And I really can't thank you so freaking much. So with no further ado, here is the Amazon deal of the day. I have cats. I don't know if you do. If you hate me for cats, I'm sorry, but I love my kitties. I love my dogs, but everybody has a place and a time. And the worst thing to know is to do the litter boxes. Come on. What's not my favorite job either. But with pet safe, scoop free, crystal plus front entry, self cleaning cat litter box. Did you hear that? Self <laughs> <laughs> cleaning. <laughs> we never got a scoop again, guys. And I have to say, this one's a really good deal. It's 47% off. It used to be $349.99, and now it is $184.95. I'll have the link in the bio. And again, guys, thank you so much. Ariel, thank you so much for being with us. I truly enjoy it, and I would love to have you come back, and we can talk further into some of the newest work you've got coming this week, this year, right? This year, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you everyone for listening. Until next time, bye-bye for now.